I'm going to ask a question uh, up front. I want to tell you that. Please don't answer this, okay? Because there's a little twist to it, all right? Uh, you know, most people would say they're open-minded. And that's the question. Are you open-minded? And 99% and of people say, yeah, man, I'm open-minded. But uh, before you answer that, uh, just wait till the end of the, of the message today because I want to talk to you about rebooting your thinking. Are you open or not open? All right. So Romans chapter 12 and verse number 2. I'd like to read out the New King James Version today. It says this, And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is the good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. Now, how many of you understand that to be conformed to the world means that you think like the world, you have the views of the world, you act like the world, and you have the belief system and the value system of the world, right? Could we not say that what Paul, what the author to the Romans is saying here is that we are not to be open to the world? How many of you agree with that? Not to be open. All right. All right. Uh, so, 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 so the Word tells us our minds need to be renewed, and we know that that happens when we study the Word of God, when we hear the Word of God preach, when we, uh, we listen to, uh, you know, to teachings that helps us in our mind to be transformed. Romans chapter 12 and verse number 2 in the New Living Translation says this. It says, don't copy the behavior and customs of this world. But let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn how to know what God's will is for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. And I, I, I'll be honest with you today, I'm out to change the way you think today. I'm out to go, I'm after your mind. I'm after the way you think. And I'm going to challenge you deeply today on some issues. And I, and I dearly love the way that the author of the, the paraphrase called The Message puts it. This is what he says, Romans 12 and number 2. This isn't a translation, but what he thinks the scripture says, but it's good. He says, don't become so well adjusted to your culture that you fit into it without even thinking. Instead, fix your attention on God. You'll be changed from the inside out, readily recognize what He wants from you, and quickly respond to it, unlike the culture around you always dragging you down to its level of immaturity. God brings the best out in you, develops, develops well-formed maturity in you. All right, today I want to ask you three incredibly powerful questions about your life today. The first one is this, do you have a biblical world view? I don't know if you understand it or not, but there's a war going on around us. You might be, not even be aware of it, but it's happening. Uh, some call it a cultural war. I call it a spiritual war. It's been going on a long time. Actually, it's been happening for centuries and decades. And, and, and I'd like to tell you that the church is winning the cultural war and the spiritual war. But the truth is, we are not. We are not. Our nation, along with many other nations in our world, seems to be moving further and further away from biblical truth. Values are changing Homes are changing. People's view of what is right and wrong is changing. What people believe about sexuality is changing. The type of home life and family life that people uh, desire is changing. And frankly, to be honest, sometimes the church of the Lord Jesus Christ is changing. Now, if we went back in time about 100 years most of the United States of America where we live would have had what is known as a biblical world view. And while many in that day chose not to follow Christ and they lived their, their life the way they wanted instead of following Jesus, at least they had an understanding of what was right and what was wrong. But in the last 100 years, we've seen a tremendous cultural shift take place in our world. It has not been good for our culture and our world. It has not been good for the church. 
Uh, in, in, in our culture at large, unfortunately, people have lost a sense of what I want to call biblical morality. And that loss has caused in families around our nation, in families in Houston and in Katy, it's brought devastation and problems and heartache to a lot of people. And to be honest, I'm a little bit afraid about the next generation. You know, what will the world be like when my grandchildren Children are living an adult life. I think about that and, 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 and my prayers go out for them. And what's interesting in these same 100 years, our level of prosperity has increased a lot for some people. My grandmother and grandfather lived in Waco, Texas, in a little two-bedroom clapboard house with swamp air conditioning. Uh, some of y'all don't even know what that is, all right, but you can look it up. Had swamp air conditioning, and and uh, when my uh, my grandmother died, they sold the house and the lot and the and the garage. This was only 15 years ago for about seventeen thousand dollars, all right. They were poor as far as this world's goods were concerned. But let me tell you something. They were rich in faith because they had an understanding of what the Word of God taught and had an understanding of the values that God wanted them to have in their life. Now, the Barna Research Group has, has defined a biblical worldview as, uh, as, as one that includes at least the following six points. And before we jump into those today... I want you to understand that the, 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 the most recent statistic that has come out, only 1% of the students that are graduating from high school this year, only 1% actually will have a complete biblical worldview. Only one in 99. I think we ought to give a big hand for all of our Christian teachers, come on, that teach in our schools, come on. You're on a mission field. We, we need you there, and we need to support you and pray for you. But, but, but the Barna Research Group has defined a biblical worldview as one that includes the following points. And I'm going to take the most toughest one first. Number one is that absolute moral truth exists. Absolute moral truth exists. Right is right and wrong is wrong. Most millennials today will tell you that truth is whatever fits their own ideas. And if there is no absolute truth, then here's the key. Then I can do whatever I want. I can have sex with whomever I want. I can live however I want. I don't have to listen to the preacher. I don't have to listen to the Bible. I, I can do whatever I want. I don't have to listen to anybody or anything. And I don't, won't ever have to give an account to any God ever because there's absolutely no moral truth. Let me tell you something. The enemy is a liar. There is absolute moral truth. Truth. Come on. And it may sound old fashioned, but I still believe that the Bible clearly tells us how to live our lives. Some things are right and some things are wrong. Hello, come on. Sin is sin. If God says it's sin, then it's sin. And I want you to know that I stand today on the Almighty Word of God and it tells us how to think. It tells us that our mind needs to be renewed and that there is an absolute moral standard of truth. I believe in the Bible as the inerrant, infallible, inspired Word of God. Come on, can you give the Lord Jesus a big hand of praise today? Amen. Thank God for the Word. The second ingredient in a biblical worldview is that the Bible is totally accurate in all of the principles that it teaches. Many people do not believe that in this generation. They will automatically dismiss the Word of God by saying things like this. It's too strict, too narrow, too harsh, too judgmental. And then they'll say something like, well, anyhow, you know, man has changed the, you know, the basic meaning of the Bible by, by rewriting it. Let me tell you something. That's a lie. It's true and inerrant in, its, in, in the original languages that, that, that have been found. And then they will say, what we need to do is we need to change the Bible to make it fit modern times. I'll have you know that is wrong. Come on. Most people haven't even read the Bible. If you have a biblical worldview, you believe that the Bible is totally accurate in all of the principles that it teaches. Number three, the third ingredient in a biblical worldview is, and I wonder, are you checking these off in your, on your notes or in your mind? Do you have these things in your mind? This is a biblical worldview. Satan is a real being or force 
not merely, merely symbolic. A lot of people reject the idea that there is a fallen angel by the name of Lucifer who re rebelled against God, took one-third of the angels of heaven with him, and that he exists. They see Satan as some type of a Christian symbol of evil, not as a real true entity. We've got to believe what the Word says. Number four, it's the fourth ingredient in a biblical worldview is that people cannot earn their way into heaven by trying to be good or doing good works. That is, the, that is an absolutely true statement. You can't earn your way into heaven. This has to do with an understanding of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I don't care how moral of a person you are. I don't care how many good works you do. Uh, you know, you could give all your money to the poor, give your body to be burned, do all kinds of good works. But the only reason why heaven opens its doors to anybody is because of the shed blood of Jesus Christ. What he's done for us on the cross of Calvary. Come on. On. You know, a lot of people think that mankind is good. Did you know that the Bible doesn't teach that? The Bible teaches the exact opposite of that. It says all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Come on. Uh, you know, everybody needs a Savior and His name is Jesus. You can't earn your way in. You can't work hard enough to get in. And yet if you ask people today in the street, uh, and you would say to them, why should God let you into His heaven? Most people would tell you, well, because I'm a good person. I'm a good person. Listen, we've got to get back to what the Word says. Number five, this is the fifth ingredient of a biblical worldview, that Jesus Christ lived an absolutely sinless life. Come on, that's true. Jesus did not sin on this earth. Can I just say something? Someone a few years ago came up with a ridiculous lie about my Lord and Savior. They're trying to write a book and make a movie that, that, that somehow, you know, that he had this affair with Mary Magdalene. I'll tell you something, that irritates the fire out of me. Come on. Jesus was tempted in all ways like we are yet without sin. And yet a lot of people, if you ask them on the street, do you believe that Jesus sinned? Most people will say, yeah, he did. And the reason why they say that is because if Jesus sinned, I mean, you know, what's the big deal? Anyhow, if he sinned, I can go ahead and sin as well. And then number six, the last ingredient is God is the all-knowing, all-powerful creator of the world and still rules the universe today. That is absolutely true. I'm here to tell you that God created the heavens and the earth. Well, you say, Pastor, I believe in the Big Bang Theory. So do I. Come on. God said it, and bang, there it was. Come on, somebody. Uh, God's the creator of the heavens and the earth. Amen. And he's in charge of the universe. A lot of people think that the universe is just out there spinning around. No one's looking over it. Let me tell you something. God has a plan. You want to know how the world ends? I can tell you. I can, re I can show you in the Word of God exactly what is going to happen. Jesus Christ still rules and he still reigns come on you say why is that important here's why it's important because you see if I don't believe in the rule and reign of God if I believe that there is no God and he's not ruling and reigning then guess what I don't have to worry about the final judgment do I I don't have to worry about heaven and hell I don't have to worry about giving an account for my life and how I lived it come on today church I'm just here today to tell you that we've got to get back to the understanding what the Bible teaches about the gospel of Jesus Christ. And if what Barna Research tells us is true, that only 1% of this current generation believes and has a biblical worldview, I want to scratch my head and say, how in the world did that happen? What went wrong? And if you're a Christian today, that statistic ought to shake you up because it could mean that millions of people will perish and go lost. And I'm concerned about that. We are losing the war for the hearts and minds of this generation.